Okay. So, hello everybody. Uh, I, this, uh, there's a story behind this presentation, and that is that I was, in, I was trying to find a speaker for, I think it was the, um, the March or April uh, 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 meeting, and I panicked. I couldn't find anyone, and so I sent a, an email to all, all our friends and, and connections of, you know, help me out. I need somebody for April. And, and um, everyone came up with, with an idea, and every idea was, this is a person, but it's July, or this is a person, this is June, this is a person, and it's, you know, September, and I actually filled up almost the entire year, except for that April, that was always, that was always the problem, and, but then finally somebody came up with that, but this, this came from our dear friends, John and Veronica, who spoke earlier about their, the um, John Montgomery movie, and that, John Montgomery became a theme, all, I think, all last year, we had probably five or six talks on John Montgomery, and, um, you know, we had the authors who wrote the book, and the movie makers, and, and uh, uh, several people. <laughs> yeah. And um, so we're just completely jazzed by John McGovern, and it's just amazing to have the glider invented, you know, five miles down the road to, to, the, to our glider club. So we're really just thrilled about that. So we're so happy that uh, Elena, uh, Sonia, and Brett came through John's recommendation to talk about what they're doing for outreach, doing with their um, fifth graders to teach them about, about math and science. And, and this using gliders and using, you know, that's John Montgomery's story and various things. So I, I, I wanted to get more into that because, um, like I said, we're crazy about John Montgomery, but also we are crazy about reaching out to, to youth. Um, we, we have quite a few outreach programs, and um, it's the holy grail of our outreach program is that we think, you know, like, when I was designing that glider, you wouldn't believe how much math I had to kind of dust off to, to do that. And it's just great the way it pulls kids into doing something besides just watch TV and watch YouTube and, and do Facebook. So it's a, a great way to pull yourself into math, science, and technology. I learned a time about batteries, too, from flying model airplanes. And, and then it applies to the, model, the, the uh, Tesla cars and the various things you hear going on in Silicon Valley. So it, it's just exciting how this all ties together. So I thought to build on this, uh, we'd hear about uh, Elena and the, the fifth grade teacher's approach to getting kids interested in this subject, and, and maybe we can help you with some ideas or, or help you maybe with some manpower on that, because we're, we're very excited about what you're doing. So Excellent. take it away, Elena. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eliana. You just call me Ellie for short. And uh, I created something called the John J. Montgomery Glider Unit. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about how that how that came to me in a few moments. And um, I've been teaching at Montgomery now for, I guess, actually this coming year will be my fourth year at Montgomery, um, teaching fifth grade all four years. I taught sixth grade for seven years before that and was an instructional writing coach um, for another year prior to coming to Montgomery. And I love science. I love teaching science. Um, I do not have an engineering background, so this was a challenging unit for me to put together, um, but I had a lot of fun doing that. So I'll just let my teammates go ahead and introduce themselves. I'm Sonia, this will be my third year at Montgomery School, and like Eliana said, it was kind of a challenge. There was a lot of concepts that we weren't familiar with, and so we were learning right along with the kids, which made it, I think, even more fun. I'm a big fan of project-based learning, making learning real for students, you know, connecting it to real-life scenarios for them, and I enjoyed going through the unit. She did a really good job of setting this up for us, and it was a lot of fun, and we're happy to tweak it and hopefully do another round of it this next year. I'm um, Brett Davis. I also teach fifth grade at Montgomery. Um, I used to teach in Gilroy. I've been teaching for about 10 years. Um, I really enjoy the project-based learning aspect of this. I'm new to project-based learning. This is probably my first official. It's kind of the big thing, and one of the big things in education right now is, and it, and it works, I mean, my limited experience, it works. I mean, the kids, it's hard to get all 30 plus of them excited about, you know, anything, like all at once. And, and in a project like this, it was, it was pretty much 100% participation, enthusiasm, it was, it was pretty great. So we'll talk a little bit more about what project-based learning actually is, and I, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but um, it, it's a teaching methodology 
that um, I wanted to try and get integrate all the STEM disciplines, so science, technology, engineering, and math, um, and see if we could teach that through this one project. Um, I think we'll see how on this side, see if that's how we're going. If that's okay with you. Okay, next slide. Um, so there's us, we fun loving teachers. This has nothing to do with the glider unit, but I, I wasn't sure if we were all three going to be here, so I wanted everyone to be recognized. So the last time it actually rained. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get more on this slide, Kyle, if you can click forward. So I just uh, wanted to say an extra special thank you to Sonia and Brett for um, helping me basically implement this project this year. I wasn't sure if it was just going to be my classroom. It ended up being the whole grade level, so I really appreciate their support, and they came um, up with a lot of really good resources that I didn't find when I was first putting it together. Um, so, an example of great collaboration, and I'm very happy to, to be working with them. And of course, thank you to John and Veronica. They were the reason that this project got made in the first place, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later, and thanks for connecting us with the South Bay Soaring Society. We're happy to be here. And I also wanted to recognize a couple other professors at Santa Clara who helped at some point or another in the project, and that's Kane Korsmeyer and Drazen Fabrics. They um, donated really fun goggles that the kids love wearing, and um, they actually uh, coordinated Santa Clara um, student volunteers that came as we were putting together our gliders, and that was really helpful. So we appreciate all that. Ready? Yep. So um, this is what I plan to present. Some of it might be a little too teachery, maybe too much information. So if, you're, if you've had enough, feel free to let us know. Feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, I'll talk a little bit about why we're here. I think Kyle kind of covered a lot of that already. I'll tell you a little bit about Montgomery and Dr. Rucker. Thank you for being here, our principal again. Feel free to jump into some of that information too, since you've been there longer than we have. And uh, I'll tell you how the project got started, give you some context for um, what standards we're using to teach it and an overview of the unit. Um, I, I completed a, a, my master's program recently and this um, creating this unit and I did an action research project on it to look at how it was implemented and what were the results of that. So if there's time and you're interested, I can describe those a little bit and um, based on those results, how we're going forward with the project for next year. And if there's time, um, I also have a slideshow on my computer so you can see our kids um, throughout the project, how it kind of went for them. So, for, we are here, as Kyle mentioned, because we really, really, really like your support. Um, you all have engineering backgrounds, and we heard that you help out a local high school, and it sounds like you're involved in some other programs as we were hearing as you're sitting here. And um, our kids love visitors, and they love meeting new people, and they love learning, so we would um, like to have you. And <clears throat> I also would um, really like to put together a team that could help us review the engineering and aeronautics content of the project, because as I think we said, none of us are engineers, and um, that was something that I had to teach myself as I was creating it, and I want to make sure that what we are um, using for this unit is very accurate information, and I'm sure you can give us some of that background to improve it. And finally, um, uh, I think that the local high school, you also are involved with supporting a robotics team there, so I would love to get some more STEM learning opportunities at Montgomery, and so any advice or support you can offer that way, we would uh, be happy to hear all about it. So we look forward to working with you. And this is our school, John J. Montgomery Elementary School. It's located in southeast San Jose. You just go down 101, get off on Capitol, drive into town a couple minutes. And right out front, right in front here, is Daniel Maloney Drive, which um, when I first started teaching at this school, I had no idea who John J. Montgomery was, and I did not know who Daniel Maloney was. And um, there's a couple more bullet points there, too. Thanks. Um, so just a little bit about Montgomery. In, uh, it was a 1995 and 2000 California Distinguished School, so some really good awards there. Um, we are very ethnically diverse, so 36% of our school, is, our student population is Hispanic, 34% Vietnamese, 12% Filipino, 11% white, and 7% African American. 
We have a pretty broad base of socioeconomic statuses, but we are a Title I school, so 60% of our students come from socioeconomically disadvantaged homes, and 37% are English language learners. And as I mentioned before, these kids really, really love having visitors. We will be their best friend. They love learning. Um, they're very enthusiastic about hands-on activities, and as we'll show you with this um, project, they loved um, building gliders. So a little bit of uh, background on how the project got started. So if you could, oh, there we go. So we have um, something called College Day, or College Week at Montgomery, and I believe it's a nationally, um, it's not a holiday, but a program that are, is implemented in schools around the nation. So for one week, well, throughout the whole school year, but for in particular for this one week, we um, focus on how kids can get to college, why going to college would be beneficial for them, um, things they could learn, uh, career paths they could take, and each classroom um, adopts a university. So since I did all of my higher education at Santa Clara University and I also uh, received my credential there, uh, I asked my class if they wanted to adopt Santa Clara and they did. So I go there, go to the bookstore, I'm looking for little stickers and pencils and things to bring back to them that will be very exciting. And I see the new library across the way, and I, when I was there, that library existed, but looked nothing like this, so I thought I'd go check it out. As soon as I walk in the doors, there's this huge banner saying there's a John J. Montgomery exhibit. I'm like, whoa, I teach at John J. Montgomery School, that's interesting. So I walk into the exhibit, and I'm looking at all these newspaper articles and pictures on the walls, and find out he was a student and a professor at Santa Clara and it just kind of blew my mind that I had this connection of this school where the students and, and teacher really didn't know much about him and I just thought um, that was a fun piece to put together. So that happened my first year at Montgomery and then my second year there, that's when John and Veronica reached out to Dr. Rucker and they came and did a presentation on Montgomery uh, which we learned all kinds about uh, all kinds of things about John J. Montgomery, and then as I think we mentioned earlier in the meeting, they gave the balsa wood pieces. The kids got to decorate them, put the gliders together, and they stood on top of those blue tables and launched them off and uh, tested them out. And they just they just had so much fun. They were laughing and screaming and having the time of their lives. They loved being outdoors and just the the experimenting of it. So all that came together in last summer when I had to, I was doing an independent study, we did a project to do, wanted to look at STEM and project-based learning, and that's where the project came. So here's some, um, a little bit on project-based learning. Either of you want to take that or you want to just keep going? <laughs> okay, I'll keep going. Um, so it's a, as I mentioned before, it's a teaching methodology that is um, pretty intense and very time consuming, but as Brett mentioned earlier, has a lot of great rewards. And one of the things that's really different about project-based learning um, compared to what you consider as traditional learning is that you first develop in students a need to know. And um, so it's very student-driven. So um, a need to know is, something that you would get at by an entry event. So for example, for ours, and I'll show a couple of pictures later, um, John and Veronica came and talked about Montgomery. So that's created in our students a need to know some more about Montgomery, who is this person, what did he do, uh, and then that gets into the engineering of it. And then you also have a driving question that frames the unit, and um, as students, figure out how to answer that driving question. They come up with more need-to-know questions. We record them, check them off as we address them. And the lessons that we do or the, the opportunities that we create in the classroom for research come about because the students ask those questions. So it's very different than opening up a textbook and flipping to the next page, okay, we're gonna do this lesson. It's more when the kids inquire about it, figure out it's what they need to know, that's when we address it. Um, a good PBL project also has to be about really significant content, and I'll go over those standards in a moment. It has to have inquiry, so real true investigation where students are figuring things out. Um, student choice is a huge part of it. 
Sometimes students actually help create the driving question. Sometimes their choice is in how to answer the driving question, the product they create. It could be about the research process, um, but very much in their hands. Um, it has to address something called 21st century skills, which is put forth by an organization called 21st, a Partnership for 21st Century Skills. And uh, they're basically, they have a couple of um, faith, uh, pieces to their system, and that is something they call the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, and four C's, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and uh, creativity. So making sure that all those elements are within a project. Also, a PDL project needs to um, give students the opportunity to receive feedback, not just from teachers, but from other classmates, and to act on that feedback and revise whatever it is they're doing. Also, finally at the end, they have to present to a public audience for it to be a good PBL project. So not just their classroom and their teachers, they have to present to other people in the district, to um, their parents, other classroom teachers can be there, but we like to involve as many community members as possible to make it a, a real authentic experience and like something that they would do in, later on in their careers. Um, so the main standard that I was trying to address with this unit is from our Next Generation Science Standards, which California adopted in 2013, and that is engineering design, and these are the, the three basic components of that. So uh, defining a simple design problem, generating and comparing multiple solutions to that problem, and then planning and carrying out tests, and figuring out how to adjust whatever models they're working with. Thanks. So other uh, standards, we are also looking at old standards that were adopted in 1998, our California State Science Standards, and um, the portion that this project addresses is the investigation and experimentation. That's pretty much the scientific method. And then um, you've probably been hearing a lot in the news lately about Common Core. So of course, this project also addresses Common Core, mostly math. And for fifth grade, that is um, converting measurements. So in this project, you could use metric system or customary system. I kind of did a little bit of both, because we have to teach both. Um, it addresses basic computation with fractions and decimals also. And for us this year, English language arts was not a focal point of the unit, but you can definitely build it out that way if you wanted to. So for reading, you could address foundational skills and informative text, writing informative text. Uh, speaking and listening standards and language standards, which are basically grammar. So here's uh, here's the unit. This is just a, a broad overview. This is our driving question. How can we, as aeronautical engineers like John J. Montgomery, design and test model gliders? And these were our five main goals. So learn about Montgomery. Do some engineering practices, practice the scientific method, practice measurement, develop some technology skills, and then work on those uh, 21st century skills that I mentioned earlier. And this is the basic scope and sequence, and I'll go a little more into detail with this in a moment. First, we just looked at what are some basics about gliders. Then the kids designed and built and tested their model. And after that, we taught them about the physics of flight and studied other glider models. And then using that information, they redesigned their own original glider. And then finally, they presented all that at the glider exhibition. So these, um, there are a lot of different resources that we're pulling from. We didn't have one textbook we were looking at, but a great um, resource for us and hopefully something that you can um, also help us um, expand upon is the NASA.gov site. They have a huge section on planes and they have some information about gliders and of course they attribute all of that to the Wright brothers. Um, so I was mostly just looking at the physics and not the history of flight with them. But um, so I was thinking, I don't know, maybe in one of our projects we can write some letters to NASA, ask them what's going on there, see if we can fix that. Um, also, Brett found this really great video at the, the Santa Fe Library? Yes. 
Yeah, so it's called Physical Science for Children, all about flight by Schlesinger, Schlesinger Science Library. It's an excellent video. It actually really helped me. I don't know about you guys, but... That was good. I want the whole. I want the whole set. There's yeah. like 13 videos in the same one. It's very, very helpful, helpful for us non-engineering people to try to understand what's going on a little bit better with flight. And then just in passing and talking with one of my friends, and we were arguing about Bernoulli's principle and how that actually works. So we ended up going online and finding this video on YouTube: How does a wing actually work? Which talks about Bernoulli's principles and Newton's laws and how the two of them can be used to explain how flight happens. Um, so that was helpful. And then just a bunch of other things. So we found a bunch of uh, children's books even in our in our school library, right? Mm -hmm. On flight, of course, all about the Wright brothers again. Um, and uh, Quest for the Flight, I haven't quite finished it yet. The book that, I think they're both Santa Clara professors, right? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 Har Harwood and Fogel, they're, uh, uh, Har Craig Harwood is a descendant of uh, Montgomery. Oh, okay. And he's a, a, a geologist. Over in Santa Cruz, and uh, uh, Fogel is—he's uh, a glider. He's a CEO of an artificial intelligence company down in San Diego. Dude, uh, wasn't there a Santa Clara professor that helped write this too? Uh, no, no. You're Burdick. thinking of oh, oh, John it Burdick. Like a different book. Yeah, it's, it is a different book. Oh, no, no, you're thinking oh. of Arthur Spearman. Um, oh, Spearman. Yeah, he, that's he right. Was Spearman. A, he was a, was a, um, a priest. Fogel has been involved in a lot of things. Yeah, and he spoke, 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 spoke here as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he'd been doing a lot of good for since he was a little kid. Yeah. And uh, then, then just a lot of web searches on Montgomery and how stuff works. It actually has a lot of good information on how sailplanes work and um, goes into a lot of those details about thermals that you were just mentioning in your meeting. And we didn't quite go that far with our fifth graders, but. You definitely could if someone was interested. And then modelaircraft.com had, um, I don't know if that's the styrofoam plane that you were referring to before. The that foam plane, yeah. The FPG. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that comes from the EMA. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so Modelaircraft is our, uh, our national organization. We all board with it. Yeah, okay. we, we use that one. It was great. It's all coming together. Yeah. They, all, they also have an uh, education division. Yeah. yeah. They have great videos that show you how to how to put them together and yep. how you can test things yep. out. So. And we, she found a lot of sources, and I we, I found a few. But I mean that's something we definitely because it's so open ended and student driven that you want to have just folders full of videos and links and clips and because you never kind of really know what they're going to ask or what we're going. Good to know. Low cost rubber power or rubber. Powered models, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All kinds to check out. <laughs> okay, so this is a, a little more into detail about the unit. So this was our entry event. John and Bronco were our entry event. They came to talk to our school about Montgomery and the movie they're putting together. And um, after that, we introduced our driving question and began to record what are those things that students need to know. So these are just examples of some of the things they're asking. Who's Montgomery? Um, why is our school named after him? How come nobody knows about him? And they all know about the Wright brothers. Who's Daniel Maloney? And then we kind of get more into the engineering aspect of it. And if kids don't come up with the engineering um, questions, we, we know where the unit's going, so we kind of guide that way, guide them that way. Um, and so based on what they ask, we begin either researching, providing research opportunities for them, or, or lessons. And we made really clear what the task was based on our driving question you're going to design glider test it out design it again after you learned a bunch of things and then you're going to present your results and so here's uh, more specifically how the unit went so the second day talking about just things that fly in general where their observations types of flight uh, defining air and aeronautics and different things that we found on the nasa website and then talk, focusing a little bit more on just what are some things that glide. And then the next day, what are the parts of a glider? How do they get launched? How do they stay in the air? And then really specifically looking at wings and why that's such an important feature. And um, I found a, a paper drop activity online where you, you just find different weights of paper, sizes and shapes, 
have students drop them from high above and notice what are the, the patterns in the behavior as they're gliding down. Um, and then um, PBL projects are always done in partnerships or teams. So on the fourth day, we um, had students kind of create a contract in their team, how they can make this partnership work and solve problems that come up between them. We went over the final project rubric, what they're going to be expected to be able to produce by the end. Um, they, we had materials laid out all over the table in the classroom, all over the floor. It was basically just a garage full of stuff in our classrooms for a while. And so they got to kind of see what they could, uh, what they could do with that material. And then they planned and designed and started building. So giving them a little bit more time to build if they needed to, we, we went into uh, what center of gravity and started talking about aircraft rotations and different features that you would see on a glider, and we thought it was a good time to do that so that when they actually tested them, they could have the language to describe what they were seeing, or at least try to. Um, and because we want as much of the project to involve critical thinking and be student-driven, um, we had them also figure out, well, how are you going to test these? And when you test these, how are you going to record your, record your results? What is, the, what is that table going to look like? What are you going to talk about after you get these results? How are you going to analyze them? So then we tested the gliders, calculated average distance after three trials, and uh, analyzed their performance. <coughs> and then after that, that's where we went into our information on physics on a, of, a fl of flight. So three forces on a glider. Newton's Laws of Motion, Bernoulli's Principle, uh, that YouTube video on the physics of a wing, and then we started a series of building the model letters that we found online, testing those, and uh, uh, basically just giving more students information about here are some designs and features that you could try to use. And the next slide is just some pictures from that. So, dropping paper, seeing how it floats. We have a Santa Clara student helping out a couple of my kids. This was their first design on this paper plate. And they quickly figured out that that probably wasn't going to work. <laughs> so they started using it as like inside of some packaging for a sock. So they decided to use that and parts of this frosted flame box. So as you can see, we're at, a, we're at a very, very basic level of glider building. Nothing close to that beautiful glider <laughs> over there. But you got to start somewhere. And uh, Brad, are these your kids? Yes. Testing? Yeah. And just learning how to use a tape measure, I discovered was a pretty oh, valuable that's skill. That's <laughs> that's <laughs> that's they did not know it, how to do it. Yeah, how to read it, right. how, you, how you write down fractions if you're using a customary system or decimals. Or, um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of skills that aren't necessarily part of our standards, that are just life skills that they ended up having to figure out. I'd say their first gliders were more like art projects. They were more about how cool they could make them look. Yeah. Like, you know, sticking yeah. just extra things on there. Tissue paper streamers and, <laughs> and uh, really fabulous things like that that we were just like, all right, go for it, try it out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking at the next slide. Uh, so then the next slide is just the continuation of the unit. So we did the, the foam uh, glider from the AMA website, the FPG9, which they love that. That really introduced a lot of different things for them to think about. It's really fun to build. Um, and then we did a hoop glider. Uh, it's basically your class did that one, right? Yeah, just like a straw. Mm -hmm. you know, just go ask Starbucks. Kind of please have forty straws and just strips of uh, the note cards cut into like one inch wide strips. One small one, one bigger one. And I don't even know if it's technically a glider. But it, it, glides. it uses the <laughs> principles, yeah. So it's, it, they go pretty far. Yeah. Um, it doesn't fall straight down, it's a glider. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we did have to have that conversation. <laughs> and, and some of this was like, you know, we had to figure out as we implemented for the first time, well, what's the difference between just throwing something and seeing it land and something actually gliding? So that was... How well do you tell the story? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a... Uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was kind of a hard concept for them, but... Um, Some of them were so heavy they could just throw them Yeah, and they could throw really far because they were just chucking them. <laughs> so, so that would be interesting for us to try to figure out next year. Or, but no, it, it, it definitely launched a good discussion of, is that actually gliding? And then going back and watching some of the videos and going over the vocabulary again, which is the hardest thing for them. Glider or a projectile? Yeah. 
Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or even That's when, where you look at it. Yeah. Standardized lunch technique. Yeah. yeah. That will separate. That was them. something we really had trouble with. Because um, Drazen came in and, uh, and showed his model glider that he made in fifth grade. And I, I didn't actually see how it was involved a rubber band. I think maybe a paper clip and he had something attached to the bottom of the glider. And it launched it beautifully. But most of our kids' gliders would fall apart if they tried to launch it with a rubber band. So we could definitely need some help with that. <laughs> Um, it was, I, mean, I, I, have, I have to say, so seeing the, those original versions of the glider, like you said, the fanciful ones, and some look a lot like something a kid might have seen in Star Wars, you know, or the, oh, it's yeah. made out of an egg carton that has butterfly wings and yeah. long eyelashes and yeah. you know, face <laughs> on the front. But they, because it was their own design, and they all kind of wanted this thing to fly, and when they did those experiments, you could really tell that they were like, oh, that didn't work. I mean, because it was their design that they were experimenting on, just, all right, I just threw this thing and it flew far or not far, they were really internalizing, okay, what are, what are the design changes? You know, right. and they, they learned a lot from that. Yeah. And I, I love that, I mean, when I was talking to the kids after, I'd say, yeah, you can, now you know that you can make stuff kind of out of stuff your mom's probably going to throw away, like a little cereal box and stuff like that. So you can, you can keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the designated plastic kit for NASA for educational purposes only, you know. Is, did you just go get some stuff and go play? Right. I, I had to really make sure I didn't say, don't put that on there because that's going to create more drag. Like, I just yeah. had to let them yeah. figure it out. Yeah, yeah. that's not easy. No. <laughs> no, especially when you see like how much time it's taking. It's like, anyways, that's, that's our issue to work with. Um, so anyways, we finished the, the setting the model gliders that are out there and they reviewed how their first glider went, built another one, they, we, um, we, they tried it out, kind of adjusted it as we went before the, the actual final testing. <clears throat> and then for basically the next four or five days of the unit, it was just preparing for their presentation. Um, and this is where the technology came in. We had each team of students, they were in groups of two or three, um, use PowerPoint to create the slides for their poster board. It was basically like a kind of a science fair poster board setup. Um, so they got, and, and PowerPoint just happened to be a really easy way to create the right size to then print and then cut out and put on the poster board. Um, so they did that pretty well. And then we also had some other students with a little extra work where um, they tried out for parts of basically running the entire exhibition. So introducing the project to parents, introducing the guest speakers. Some of them created the PowerPoint for that um, and then uh, figured out how they were going to help the class demonstrate their gliders outside after the inside part of the glider exhibition. And then on, here's just a couple pictures from that. So the favorite glider, the FPG-9. And then here are some of those redesigned gliders. So you can see they're all very different shapes. Uh, they definitely started incorporating some things from the, the FPG and different, you know, the hoop glider, there was even a few hybrid Hoop gliders, plate gliders, and, and they got a lot more creative. I noticed too. Like a lot, the first stuff they would bring in to build with was like frosted flakes boxes and just kind of really random stuff. But they got really deliberate with. And they brought in clay and they brought in you know matchsticks, you know, because they're light wood. And a few of them went you know shopping. Yeah. Actually bought stuff, which I told them not to do. But they got pretty competitive. And, yeah. And the exhibition is great too because. I mean, it's once a year there's a science fair, so to have more experiences like that, I think helps them a lot. Yeah. And uh, before the actual exhibition, we invited other classrooms at our school to come in so the kids could, could get practice presenting. So this was just inside the classroom before they went and did it in the auditorium in front of um, the community. And this was very common that we saw our first gliders. Oh, sorry, if you could just go back a moment to this last picture. I, my kids were really stuck on like, what? How are we gonna put together a glider? What do you mean we have to make wings and a fuselage and a tail out of all this stuff? So I just picked up a paper towel and I was like, look, kind of like this, and I took some, some plates. And so almost half my class, their first glider was something like exactly like that, <laughs> the paper towel roll. So, so I, I tried not to demonstrate at first, but they were also so stuck that I, I had to show them something. But as uh, John was saying, by the time we got to the, 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 the redesigned gliders, they were much different. 
So here's our exhibition. So uh, there is our our support there, John and Veronica and Katie. And uh, we had a couple kids from Brett's class. You want to talk about what they were doing, Brett? So they were absent a lot, <laughs> chronically absent from school. So they didn't quite finish their gliders. They finished them later for the science fair, about a month later. So they became kind of public relations. And they sold candy bars to help pay for science camp. And then they kind of were in charge of the display of all the library books. and different resources we use. Yeah, we have some anchor charts up in the back there, and I think the table next to it, we, um, our intention was for people who had come to try to make their own glider. We didn't end up having time for that, but I think we were kind of doing yeah. that too. Yeah, oh, they had a little maker station, which right. it was so crowded that it didn't really work, but I think we could, we could we'll revamp that a little bit. It was fabulous. Yeah. Uh, so we have a pretty good turnout for our, our first our first exhibition, there's all our parents there. Even my mom came from Southern California. And my sister, <laughs> nice surprise man, and actually know they're coming. Um, she always comes to all my open houses, and this is kind of like one of them. And, uh, and then, so here are two students that were basically leading the entire exhibition. So Rihanna and then Christian from your class, right? And the PowerPoint behind them, a couple other students from Sonia's class put together, and you'll see them on the next slide. There's Helen and Louisa, they're running the whole um, PowerPoint. And we, we have not said a word during this entire exhibition. The kids are driving the whole thing. We're kind of there behind the scenes, but they're they're really leading it. And then uh, John and Veronica came again and spoke about Montgomery and educated our community. So we had uh, district admin there, district coaches, parents, principals. I invited people from everywhere that I knew, so, um, and then Sonia's class again, you want to explain what they're doing there? Um, so we, we don't get a lot of chance to incorporate drama and things like that into the classroom all the time, and a lot of these kids love that, and so we thought to kind of introduce the story of John Montgomery, uh, because a lot of these parents, even though they live in this area, don't really have a lot of background about John Montgomery, and so the students created a skit to kind of show his childhood and his love for trying to make things glide. And um, a lot of parents during that time were shocked to hear that all of this was local history, that this just ran down the block from our school. So that was kind of neat to watch that in action. So these three kids, right before the skit, just came in and did a little, um, how's it go? Lights, camera, actions, kind of interesting. <laughs> we tried to get as many kids as possible doing something in there. And then uh, Chloe was our young Montgomery who was playing with the glider and in the skit. Kids kind of ask her what's going on, and then from that we transition into the student presentations. That's adorable. Hey John, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember what John said. <laughs> she was great. Yeah. Was um, so the next slide is uh, um, this is the students presenting. And they were really, really excited to do this, but really, really nervous. And, and as I was putting this together, I, I mean, I heard them say they were so nervous. And I'm like, well, we, we present all the time in class. You know, what are you talking about? And, and then, Brett, I think you said earlier, like, we have a science fair at school, but there's only, you know, maybe five kids from each class that go to that. So most of them have never had this experience of presenting in front of a more formal audience this way and being accountable for their wonderful work. Because so, um, at the school science fair, they just um, present to a panel of judges, mm -hmm. like parents, community members, and stuff. So it's a smaller, this was a big audience for them. Yeah. But they wanted to go back and do it again. That was the funny part. So we came back <laughs> in the classroom to end our day. Can we go back and do that again? It was over too fast. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, our, our student MCs um, asked us to go outside, and the next slide shows our demonstration outside. Um, so one kid from each class got up there with a megaphone, we had the, the classes lined up one behind each other, this kid told them to step up to, do you remember what Jonathan said? Um, it was very good. Pretty involved, yeah. 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 Okay. He worked on it for days. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. stepping up to the line and getting ready to launch, <laughs> like the countdown. Prepare yeah. to launch. <laughs> and, uh, my mark. Yeah. And so it's really hard to see, I'm sure, from where you guys are, but most of these gliders are just kind of being thrown again, so we have to work on that whole, how are we going to launch these, how are they going to actually show gliding, but it was a good start, it was fun for them, and John was making them feel like they were 
Well, Fabulous job. So. Oh, the, the, you guys did a fantastic job. Well, I mean, we so could have kept good. going. They kept asking questions, and then we kind of explained, like, the, um, there was one part in the book where we showed them the pictures of the, the hot air balloon at the state fair with John Montgomery, and, and it was like, how can we, like, have a helium balloon up <laughs> above the school and then somehow time release. I mean, this is, they actually said these things. Yeah. Like, how do you do that? And I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> you got me. And then they wanted the assembly where <laughs> Hale Field would come. They would land in our school. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And they would study that whole process. Oh, yes. So, yeah. Oh, man. So you're awesome. You could do all those things if we could do this project all year long. But <laughs> <laughs> we can't. Um, like what else can we measure? Like they were, uh -huh. they were really asking these questions, which you don't usually get. Like, yeah. how much more math can we do? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more math. <laughs> they didn't say that exactly. But. That's kind of what they're getting at. Yeah. So how, how many kids are? I mean, that looks like a huge number. So There's, all of our classes have about thirty students. So nine all together. I just keep thinking about what we would have, how those in this room would have enjoyed such a thing when we were in the fifth grade. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. I mean, would that have been we never cool? got anything like that. No. 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 What, 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 what an impression. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. what they kept asking every day. When is it time to work on the gliders? Yeah. Like, Let's finish this first. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, the, and the great thing was, is we, I'd be out there testing with my kids, or I'd be out at PE, yeah. and then I'd see, uh, so when we're out at PE, the primary grade comes out for recess, and we see all these little kids running around with airplanes, and I'm like, what are they doing? Are they doing glider stuff too? So I talked to their teacher later, and she's like, no, they just saw you guys testing, and they wanted to do it. They're very excited. <laughs> like, That's infectious. Oh, yeah. So, um, I forget what's next. Oh, we don't really need to go all through that. We can just skip the next four, I think. This is uh, mostly just talking about how um, basic student and teacher feedback on the on how we address the STEM subjects, and the basic summary of the next couple of slides is that it was a really positive experience, but it was a very challenging one, both for the teachers, uh, well, for us. Do you guys want to talk about some of the challenges for you in particular? I definitely, your chart shows that it was the last one, but you don't have to go back and just the time, the time it takes to do something like this, which is why I think a lot of teachers in the past have said, like, you know, we can't do that. Just, we want to test. Something has to give, like you can't, you, know, you have to spend a lot of time to, to do a project like this. So what ended up happening is that, that 26 day calendar that you saw, well, <laughs> I, I went back and I counted all the times that we did it in our plan book and I counted 41 to one and a half hour periods which for teaching science in 180 day school year is about 22% of our um, our time to teach science and that's too much and we talked about how it really impacted making sure we were teaching other things. Um, so we have to figure out how to streamline the unit a little bit better. Oh, I'd still do it again, yeah. don't, don't get me wrong. So how, many, how many times have you done this? That was just one time. One. This was once, yeah. it's just this year. This yeah. year. So then if you go forward, uh, oh, okay, so this is good. So basically all those charts are talking about how it's, I think we uh, achieved our STEM goals, um, some better than others. Uh, for example, we definitely addressed science and engineering a good deal, technology a, a little bit less. You know, from our perspective, the students had a lot of fun with the PowerPoints and they rated it as like, oh yeah, this unit helped me learn all kinds of technology. So. So in their eyes, it was great. Math um, was a bit of a weak point. So only like 59.4 students thought that it, they learned math through it. In our perspective, we thought they got a lot of practice with math. But um, and I think because they're so used to the traditional way of doing math, you take out your book, you open it, and do the problems. They did not internalize the the integrated right. perspective of it. I, I thought they did. That was great. I mean, um, we, we learned as we were going. As, I mean, well, because you worked on, Ellie worked on the unit, built the unit, and then we just taught it. So, I mean, it's like learning as you go. So, um, I think doing it again, I could save a lot of time. Like, yeah. I could, you know, work in some of the, you know, writing aspects to it during language arts time, or, you know, kind of, because a lot of the Common Core standards are very, like, you could teach science with a nonfiction, because you have to read and analyze nonfiction articles anyway. So if we could just find something close to the reading level, 
on the government. You know, on flight or, you know, some of those things are hard to find. So, yeah. but they are out there, I think. Yeah. So. We took a class vote and um, students recommended repeating the unit and, and a different, uh, our coach at the school came in and asked my kids how they thought it was going and I'm so excited because one kid stood up and he was like stomping his feet and this is the best thing I've ever done, ever! And I was in front of the class and I was like, oh, that's the greatest thing I could ever hear. Um, so that was exciting. And then the, if you hit that one more time, Kyle, it's just, uh, as Dr. Rucker was already kind of pointing out, the, the graphs earlier were just showing the difference between teacher and student perspectives. And I think some of that is because of our age and experience and what does learning look like and how students are used to one way of learning. And that's very different in this PBL unit. But we want to make sure that the teacher and student perception is, is a little bit closer, because um, the more they perceive their learning, the more motivated they are to do it. And so where we're going from here is uh, kind of talked about we need to streamline that unit. I think we need to, to meet some more and, and coordinate our, our teaching resources because we all found really good stuff and, and uh, making sure we're all using that. We really, I would like to get some balsa wood or some other material options. Um, it, it's fine for kids to bring in what they have and for us to bring stuff, but we could do a lot more if we had some other options. Um, we definitely want some expert support. Um, we have a lot of field trip options that we can go to, different aviation museums. We have a, the, uh, that little airport near us. What's that one called? Yeah. 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 Here they have something good there. Um, maybe uh, establishing a, a maker space where we can share materials, just have a, a big room of things that we can use. Um, so then the following slide is just a little bit more specific on how you can help out if you'd like to come join us at Montgomery. So in terms of uh, volunteering for our next unit, it could be anything from sharing your experience as an engineer, whether it's having to do with flight or not. Um, uh, if you're a pilot, uh, what that experience is like. It could be teaching about Montgomery or teaching one of the physics lessons, um, helping us to get better materials, feedback on the uh, you were already giving it about how to create a standardized way to launch things, um, uh, or, or helping to even organize field trips would be, would be really great for us. Um, and then also, uh, I would really like to, to meet with some people to look at our materials and what we're using to teach and make sure that we're doing that well and improving on the real world connection and getting kids interested in STEM careers. One of the things that kind of got a low score was the connection to um, life beyond school, the real world connection, and students said, well, in terms of a career, I'm not going to grow up and be a, a plane designer, or I'm not going to be a pilot, so they see the connection from, and how the engineering practices they're learning are applicable to other um, careers also, so just better building that out. And then, as we said earlier, just other... Um, we have other STEM units that we'd like to put together, so if you're interested in helping out with those or creating some kind of after-school club in Montgomery, we would love to have you, and our kids would be very, very excited as well. So, thanks for your support. Thanks for having us tonight. Here's our info if you'd like to get in touch. And, uh, yeah. Oh, good. By the, by the way, we've been videotaping this. We have a YouTube channel, and we post these things, and so they get hits over the years, and over, the, over the season, and we get, uh, we get a lot of interest in our group that way. And most of our members are not here, so they kind of, some of them just tune into the YouTube video. So. Thank you so much. That, that really was informative. You know, Leonie, you, you said over and over that you, know, you didn't have any background in, uh, in engineering or, or anything like that. It's good that you said it a couple of times because I don't think we would have believed you otherwise. But I, but I should point out that uh, John Montgomery didn't know anything about building airplanes when he started either. So I think, you know, okay. Yeah. No, I was actually on the way over here. I was like, oh my gosh, hope they don't ask me really hard engineering questions. <laughs> I don't know what I remember them. It's been a whole year since I've looked at this. So, so no, we appreciate it. Uh, you know, the other thing is I think reviewing your engineering would be super simple for us. So, oh, yeah. you know, maybe you can just ask us what the question is. We can do it through email or you can come early to a meeting okay. or after the meeting. Because oh, yeah. I always think this, this, the mind meld in this oh, room yeah. 
it's probably about 100 years of engineering. So yeah. you know, well, even be, just in your presentations that you were already doing in your meeting, I was like, whoa, 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 right like, there's all these things happening that I need to know about. So, um, so we could yeah. definitely help out, even okay. if it's kind of informal. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But just like most of the class, I was thinking I have too many things to do. I mean, most of our students yeah. don't really have a lot of people in their lives who you know been to college. Like some of them do, yeah. Yeah. but it's a kind of a more recent thing. I think in their families, like older brothers, cousins, things like that. Yeah. But just uh, we're the only examples they have. You know, so I think that goes back to how they didn't really make that connection. Like, how is this going to help me? Right. Like, yeah, I might go to college, but this has nothing to do. With, you know, so yeah. Just any kind of connection. So it could even just be like I was envisioning maybe just like kids could like send a picture of what they've designed to to an engineer or or I know um, through code.org it's like an online like teaching kids how to code thing. You can do like a Skype like visiting professor kind of thing, visiting engineer and stuff. Because I know people are really busy, so you know any kind of connection, you know, even if it's not in person, yeah, you know, they would really I think they'd remember that and it'd be really meaningful. I think more of you kind of packaged it as this is the request, this is the time, yeah. and then we could, you know, yeah, pull the members and get someone to jump in. But some of the best connections I've ever made with like guest speakers or just anybody from the community is almost even just like a friend of a friend. Yeah. Like, you know, oh, you know. Maybe we could have like an asking engineer, like <laughs> yeah. portion of this where they can say I'm struggling with this and come up with a question and then can bring that to you and you guys can. Write them a little note or something. I don't know. Something along those lines. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a picture of my glider. I'm stumped. Yeah. You know, what 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 <laughs> say, say what the problem is? Like it dives, the nose right. dives, or goes yeah. high. Yeah. Yeah. The harder I throw it, the more it dives. Yeah. Can you imagine what that would do? Oh my gosh. They'd be so excited to, to get that mail. You know, even. Well, that, we, we all have. Board. Some of us have <laughs> as many as 15 or 20 airplanes <laughs> of different. <laughs> Types and sizes we can bring and show and, and fly great. and yeah. stuff too. Yeah. 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 And you have to understand with our children, the majority of our children, this is English is not their first language. It's not their second language. Some of them, it's their third language. And they were able to internalize and conceptualize and put into practice what some of us who are English only. Um, what struggle with. Um, our children are bringing in um, frosted flake boxes. That's their resources, mm -hmm. but they are so open and um, they're like sponges, am I right? In terms of just give it to me and I will internalize it. So anything that be so supportive. And don't I, we have a fabulous fifth grade team, don't we? Oh yeah. <laughs> You guys had such an impact on the on the students. I mean, I, so I I I got to see the students kind of at the very beginning when I gave my very first talk, and to, and to see them at the end. And, and the first one, you know, we, we passed out some balsa gliders. The first fifth graders, and I kind of gave a John Montgomery history lesson. We had a glider contest, but the kids building their gliders, I could see that in a lot of them there was no mechanical intuition at all. They put together, they did they had never put together any kind of an airplane, not a paper airplane, not a, you know the, the wings were asymmetrical into the wrong slot and just it was just just things like that. I mean, it was just the very first time they'd had a chance to, to lay eyes on something. And then at the end, after the thing, we're seeing the results and each one of those is explaining the changes they made the unique. I mean not that every they everyone had their own ideas. One of them, the, the fuselage that was like a, a chopstick, and they had shaved away part of the middle section to save weight. <laughs> you, you came up with that, you know? I mean, you, you really figured out what the stuff was. Um, and, and also the, the, the evidence of the students' own poured their heart into the work. I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of science fairs, you know, and a lot of them to the volcano and copy and paste from Google, kind of things like that. This one, 
everything was hand done, and and they had they had lab books with. I'm not kidding. My my wife's an engineer, and she says I asked this girl what she's done, and she showed the lab book, and I thought it was just 20 pages of handwritten notes where they had researched the history and you know little equations and stuff like that. I've never seen anything like that, you know, in a, a kid. And again, this was everybody. everybody. You know, whereas in a regular science where you get five kids from a class, there's a hundred, and every one of them. We're just standing up their big smile on their face. Couldn't wait to tell you, you know, the thing that they had learned on that. I asked one girl, what was, uh, what was your favorite thing? She says, I really like learning the aeronautical terminology, you know, about <laughs> lift and drag and thrust and pinch and yaw. And you can see it. I think your parents asked her to quit talking about that stuff at dinner, you know. <laughs> you keep going on and on about it. it clearly bought it. And, and just what, a, what an impact you guys have made. Those, Kids are going to carry you that. Chase you changed lots. You just segued yes. into a comment I was going to make. Yes. No, oh, I'm like changed lots. Saratoga, the parents are dumping on the kids to study. In oh, this yeah, case, yeah. the kids are taking that home. Yeah. And yeah. Their, their parents, dad can't build that plane because dad has never seen one. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. The kid yeah. knows more about it than the father does. Sure. Or the mother, et cetera. Sure. So it's, a, it's a cross fertilization between parents and kids. Yeah. And what right. they're learning with you, they're taking home. And I think the, the next place is to start working on the parents. Yeah. Yeah. These parents were so proud at the That's at the sad. show. The, the parents knew something special was going on. If you do this right, the yeah. kids will change the parents' minds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say, hey, this, this works. My kid's excited about oh, yeah. doing some fancy stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm in favor of that, yeah. you know. Uh, every every parent's going to, you know, pitch That's in and so open good. up for that. It's just fantastic. And just to piggyback on that, I think it was actually um, one of the kids in your class on the survey that we did, he wrote, I learned it, and then I taught my mom. It was very <laughs> 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 yeah, that's great. Uh, that's awesome. yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that would be. Another comment. Uh, when those of us have been building these things since we were this high or whatever, it's not just learning your knowledge. Building my model airplane kit from Balsa, you know, you used to buy the old comic kits and something. By the time you finish the thing, you learn how to read planes. You learn how to... You know, yeah. you've got a whole new perspective, and a lot of people did not go into aviation. They went into landscape gardening or something else. But they knew how to read plants. If you ever, ever tie luggage to the roof of your car, you want to go a little bit. Yeah, exactly. That's what it was. Yeah. I like your So did I. They're all the same. Well, the one thing we hope is to see the kids applying it outside of that time. Like we'd be walking to lunch and I'd have a girl running with her scarf and one of my lower climbing <laughs> students behind saying, look, it's lift, it's lift. <laughs> yes. That's what you're hoping for as a teacher. It's the Bernoulli principle. Yeah. <laughs> the universal language. And yeah. they, they passed it on to their brothers and their sisters who were in the lower grades. Um, the energy with the fifth grade teachers Fourth and sixth grade are now looking at how to collaborate in a PBL STEM unit. And hopefully next year we'll see something that's even um, larger. It begins to expand. Yeah. You know, it's no, yeah, no, what, you what about the other elementary schools in the, in the, it's the, it's the Evergreen District there? Um, are they aware of this or is this something that we can, we can, we can spread a little bit? Because it's really yeah. energetic local history. Um, no, actually. I mean, some of those principals are at our exhibition and a lot right. of coaches that work at other schools. Okay. Uh, but I think PBL is a relatively new thing, so in terms of this project itself, I think it'd be hard to be like, hey, here you go, yeah. we try this. It, yeah. Um, <coughs> well, but you, yeah, you I think the more the we... subset or version, yeah. I, I, I know I've, I've met a couple of principals and I'm trying to introduce it to the Los Gatos uh, Elementary School and uh, uh, the San Antonio Elementary School up in, in northern San Jose. Um, they invited us to come and, and give a talk. We, we brought Noel uh, for that. Uh, he did his uh, foam gliders and also spoke Spanish. Uh, <laughs> the, the principal brought me a bunch of uh, assisting. Here's his, the people that are assisting you know, like that. And I said, oh, okay, great. Thank you very much for coming. And the youngest one says, you know, muchas gracias por it. Oh, oh, okay, this is it. And then Noel says, no, I don't know. Oh, you're amazing. Well, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah, we're Peru. So I, I mean, I, uh, I would just love to see this uh, happen happy share. over happy again share, with yeah. you guys, and uh, and if and if and without disturbing what you're doing, if it could be, um, uh, you know, catch fire at some other places, yeah. that would that would just be fantastic. I don't know, you guys, you know, you guys work with the high school, but 
Maybe this is happening at the high school level also. It's a uh, really interesting activity all around. Well, that's, uh, uh, and, and I think it's also important to be here, you know, talk to you guys tonight, because this, I think a, a really important part of all of this is the outside uh, help. So, you know, if we, if we convince a bunch of teachers to do this kind of thing, we're going to have to, you know, hold up that middle thing. But it's a wonderful middle thing. You know, it's not volunteer and pass out programs, you know, at the assembly. I mean, it's the funnest stuff that we like to talk about. The kids that are going to be the most responsive, you know, at that, that moment. And a hundred kids captive audience, you know, for a, for a couple of months with a big uh, public we'll demonstration the at the end. person ever if you come help us. I mean, even, <laughs> like, John King said something about feeling like a movie star, and they're like, ah! Oh yeah. So I, I brought my wife and my two daughters, my uh, my third grade and my uh, and my uh, freshman high school daughter and and my wife. And we walk up to the thing, and the kids just there. They go, "It's oh, John Giddings." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Where's your uncle Pete? <laughs> that was uh, that was fun. So they, but I mean, I don't know how many uh, assembly speakers they remember the name of two months later. So clearly, this is this is stuck in their head. Right. Thanks. 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 Thanks.